welcome into this week's edition of Double T Insider. I'm Taylor Peters alongside Robert Giovanetti. Red Raider football goes on the road for the first test on the road of the season. And Gio, it was just that, not quite the outcome that this team is looking for. We're all disappointed. Everyone's yeah. disappointed what we saw happen in Tucson. There's some good things you can take from it, but that's a team you probably, uh, looking back on it on paper, should have beaten. Uh, mistakes cost you down the, down the stretch, and you end up with a loss. It was really gutting to, to listen to those players and, and Coach Wells address the media afterwards. And someone asked, you know, what, what are your thoughts on Alan Bowman? And he said, it looked like he was playing hurt. And we found out this week that uh, that he was hurt pretty badly. And we will be without him for an extended period of time, not exactly knowing how long that is. But that changes things for this offense. Certainly changes. And Alan took such a shot. It shows you how tough he is. He came back. I've had people ask about you know, is Allen fragile because of the injuries last year? I'm thinking th this kid came back after that kind of a hit and, and played, you know, to the, the extent that he the did. Game. Right. And so it's disappointing for him, I know, after what happened last year, but uh, next man up. And the defense did everything that they possibly could to, to give the ball back to the offense. And I felt like they did a good job against a really legit dual threat quarterback that they hadn't seen anybody like this year. I mean, Khalil Tate is, is a real threat. He is a real threat. And we talked all in the preseason yeah. about Jordan Brooks. And he, he showed us the other night what, I'm glad the country got to see that. I'm, I'm sorry it was so late at night because uh, the way he played, his, his physicality, the way he kind of dominated that game, uh, it, it was really great to see Jordan play that way. And he recovered a forced fumble that was huge. Coach Wells, another thing he said to the media was, anytime that this young man plays, he leaves his guts out there on the field. And another guy that did that was Douglas Coleman, who would give this group the first turnover of the season. He would finish the game with two. He was, I thought, really great. D Doug was great. He played fantastic. He, you know, he made a couple of big stops. Uh, again, you can't say, you know, you didn't get it done when you needed to get it done. Uh, but part of that was, I think, just a, a defense pretty gassed there at the end to allow that 99-yard drive. And now this week they have really a whole five, six days before they have to start preparing for their first conference game on the road against Oklahoma. It's an open week, and it comes at a really valuable time. You know, people always joke about that. The media always <laughs> talks, does the buy come at the right time? But really, for this, this team, I think this really is a great opportunity to regroup Try to get as healthy as you can. Get the next guy ready at quarterback and go from there. Meanwhile, Red Raider soccer would go 2-0 on the weekend, defeating uh, Loyal Marymount on Friday and then UC Irvine on Sunday. They outscored opponents 7-3 to this weekend. They are just, they're playing sensational right now. They really are. And you look at Kirsten Davis and what she's able to do and the fact that Jade King is out and Kirsten is still able to be such an offensive threat. J usually somebody like Jade would take some of the pressure off Kirsten and she's just stepping up. Eight goals for Kirsten Davis in the first eight games of the season. She's the first one to ever do it. She is absolutely a cornerstone for this offense. But I think something that's worth talking about is how well they've been defensively. And you and I on the show have talked about how many great defensive players they lost last year. So to be able to fill those shoes and come back and be as solid as they've been is hard to do, and they deserve a lot of respect for it. Tom Stone uses that old cliche. He talks about it. Defense travels. He likes his team to play defense first, be very strong defensively, and we've seen that this yeah. through the first uh, 10 games or so. Absolutely. Now, Red Raider soccer will go out on the road and face off against USF for one lone match this weekend before they start conference play. And Texas Tech volleyball would go two and one last weekend at the UNLV tournament. That was they're in a, going through a lot right now, and they've had to overcome a lot of adversity, right. and it's been really tough for them. So to be able to go and get a couple of wins is, is big for them. You know, to get the injury that they did at the center position of trying to find somebody to step up and fill that role, being on the road for as long as they've been, it seems like, wow, they finally got home to, to have their home opener against Abilene Christian. I think these are the kind of things that help build this team going towards conference. And Coach Greystone has talked a lot about needing to use some of these freshmen, and we've seen that in Katie Boyer, and we've seen it in uh, Lauren Dodson. And, I mean, this group is really really having to come a long way. You mentioned earlier losing Alan Bowman was tough, and this is the quarterback. I mean, losing right. Alex Kirby is the quarterback of this offense. And, and Coach Greystone likes to say about you can tell the difference that a great setter makes, and, and, and it's not anything against the people that have stepped up, but it's hard to, f to come in and fill that role. We'll talk more Red Raider volleyball coming up in just a little bit on Double T Insider. But first, how a high school coach's influence has paved the way to a college scholarship. Dalton Rigdon's story is next. Bowman has Mannix. McLean Mannix on the gas pedal. Inside the 25-yard line, dragged down by Young. That 66-yard catch and run for McLean Mannix was the longest of the day. It was his first touchdown of the day. He's a guy 
you're watching him and he's doing really well and he's consistent, but then you look up and he leads a team in receiving yards and he has a couple of touchdowns. Yeah, he's the quiet guy, right? All of a sudden, you, like you said, you look up and you're trying, you see the stat sheet at the end and say, man, I didn't realize Mannix had that not big of a night. And it was, uh, he really came through when you needed him on Saturday. Another guy that came through was TJ Vasher, that unbelievable diving catch on the one yard line. I mean, he has just been somebody who we've kind of gotten used to seeing right. plays like that from, but he's really, really talented. Those plays for TJ are, are routine for him, right? And, and again, constantly amazing that he can make a catch like that. Seems like almost every game he'll give you a play like that. We're a little bit spoiled getting well, a chance has, to see those. In he's spoiled us. We were lucky. We were literally like five yards away from him when he made the catch. And just the ability to hang on the ball, uh, you know, catch the ball and then fall like he did and still hang on to it. It's, it's really, a, he's tremendously athletic. His sense of awareness, too, and the toe tap to be able to, to stay in bounds and, yeah. and have that be a catch. But this whole group of receivers has been really tough this year. And somebody who embodies that is sophomore receiver Dalton Rigdon. He didn't have to come too far from his hometown of Perryton to walk on as a Red Raider. And he's made huge strides in this offense. My wide receiver coach in high school, Jonathan Davis, always told me every day that we sent film out, he said, never settle. Um, and that's the biggest thing that ever stuck with me is because he believed that I can go and play. My parents believed I could go and play, but most importantly, I believed I could go and play. And I just stayed true to myself. Yeah, I went into it knowing that it was gonna take so much work and so much effort, but I was willing to do that because this was my dream. And this is exactly what I wanted to do. And I wasn't going to let anything stop me from, from living that dream. You know what you're getting with Dalton every single day. Caught breaking tackles on the left side, heading up the field. He makes plays in practice all the time. He's never on the list. He's never late for anything. Just to see him finally showcase his speed for everyone, it's amazing. Grew up watching the Red Raiders, so huge tech fan. My whole family, we've always been tech fans. From, from the moment that I first walked in the Jones and saw Michael, Michael Crabtree play, I was like, yeah, this is, like, being able to do this would be a dream. Touchdown, Red Raiders, with a second to go. Man, the hardest part is, at first, you're, you're not a guy that anybody really knows. You know, at the, at the beginning, it was, um, you know, making a name for yourself. I told my parents, like, if you trust me with this, I promise you, I will put y'all in a better financial situation. You guys come in here as the non-scholarship guy. Somebody's paying for their way here, okay? But there's no entitlement. Everything's earned, man. Ain't nothing given, it's always earned. Well, y'all gotta promise not to freak out. Well, we just got out of practice and uh, I'm on scholarship. Making that phone call is just, yeah, I mean, that's just two and a half years of, of work and dedication and, you know, finally being able to fulfill that promise for them. And fake the handoff, throw it left side to Rigdon. And all of a sudden, you know, he, he makes a guy miss and he's got legit, legit speed. And he's down the sideline with great speed. He's going to score. Touchdown, Red Raiders. insane, awesome thing to happen to me yet. So as we mentioned a little bit earlier, Texas Tech has an open week this week, so hopefully they're going to be able to have some chance to just rest and recover and kind of get their bearings again, because is it safe to say that going into that Arizona game, they really didn't know who they were and, and what they had? Yeah, I think it's very fair to say that. And you faced a Power 5 team. You mentioned Tate. He, he gives you all kinds of problems. You're going to see a quarterback, Jalen Hurts, in a couple of weeks that's going to be very similar in that style of play. And now you've got Tyner and Duffy. I don't know who's going to be the, the starter against Oklahoma, but it gives both these guys a couple of weeks to work with the offense. And we haven't talked a lot about Jackson Tyner, but he transferred from Rice. He's got you know, some exposure at this level, but you've got also Jet Duffy, who's um, taken some reps for Texas Tech last year. Totally different types yeah. of quarterbacks who we really, you know, can go either way with them. My, my baseball broadcast partner likes to use, Mike Gustafson likes to use the term central casting. You see Jackson, big kid, solid, seems like traditional, standing in the pocket quarterback. Mm -hmm. And then of course, Jet, we all know what he can do with his legs. Yeah, dual threat quarterback there for Jet Duffy. I guess we'll see. We'll see. Coming up in a couple of weeks as the Red Raiders face off against Oklahoma. Still to come on Double T Insider, we feature Tony Greystone in the home opener.
tonight, the question is real simple. What are you gonna do tonight to make us better? What are you gonna do to get us closer to where we're trying to get to and get us ready for next week? First chance to play at home, first chance to make an impression on, on this group of fans on what kind of team we are and what they can look forward to this season. I wanna see some inspired volleyball tonight. Welcome back into Double T Insider. Red Raider Volleyball defeats ACU here at home in the home opener, three sets to zero. Really exciting things from, from this team who, like we talked about a little bit earlier, is still trying to overcome some adversity, working through some kinks and, and kind of changing up their offense a little bit. Battle through some adversity all on the road, and now they finally get to come back home. I think you, you talk about a team takes the personality of its head coach and Coach Greystone is so calm and he's got that presence about him, never seems to panic, never seems to go one way or the other emotionally. And I think this team has taken that upon themselves. And we've seen a lot of changes there, especially at that middle blocker position. We'd mentioned Caddy Boyer a little bit earlier, but also Allison White. Carrington Jones would get the start, but they would kind of incorporate all three of those in. And I think that part of that is just trying to get your new setter to feel a little bit more comfortable because Tatum Rome is somebody who hadn't really played a whole, a whole awful lot until we uh, lost Alex Kirby due to injury. You, you know, and I was watching that game against Abilene Christian and thinking this team is very athletic up front. And I think, you know, if you can get her back from the injury, I, I think that's going to make a big difference later on in conference play. And Coach Tony Greystone told his group before they took the court, let's go out there and set the standard really high for these fans. Take a look. I want to see you really get after it tonight. The way we start, the way we keep ourselves composed, the way we handle big moments, the way you handle your individual touch, whatever it is, and let's just make sure everything you do has intent and we are trying to get better and let's uh, play our best volleyball, okay? All right. Last rep, so they got that floating A going, right? So just don't get stuck on the ball so much that you don't see her slip behind the setter, right? We either gotta serve a short five where the libero can't get it, or we gotta go back to zone one and pick on the other girl. But either way, we gotta keep it out of six, all right? And once our serve gets back on track, we're good. Now, we gave them like four of their first five points on just RPDs, okay? So take care of the ones that they're trying to give you, and other than that, let's just keep rolling here, okay? Come on. Tuttle! Audrey Tuttle! Go, sir. Go, sir. Still high, right? But you're going, you want to go over the block and put it in the corner. Yes. And that ball's got no spin on it when it comes off your hand right now. Okay. Ball, Kylie. All right, real defense now. Be decisive, Tatum. Don't just react, right? With intent, okay? Good job, Katie. North cut. So good. So good. And that offside shot, right, that little roll shot, you gotta be really intentional about keeping that ball off the net, right? You don't have to put it right on target, you know what I mean? Okay. So if we need a blue, that's you, okay? All right, good six, nice job. Hey, that was a great run through. Now make sure you don't bite next time, right? You get to just show it once. Hey. Way to stay on it and keep on your platform. Good job. All right. Oh, good job. The Red Raiders will host UTEP, Incarnate Word, and Houston for the Red Raider Classic this weekend, and there's no other games going on on campus, so you might as well come watch some Tech Volleyball. There'll be a lot of volleyball, not just Tech Volleyball, there's a lot of volleyball at the arena all this weekend, so hopefully Red Raiders will be hoisting another one of those Raider Red trophies at the end of the weekend. Scheduling information is available at texastech.com. Coming up next on Double T Insider, I sit down with senior golfer Sandy Scott. 
Welcome back into Double T Insider. I'm Taylor Peters. I'm excited to be joined here on set by senior, the lone senior, Sandy Scott. Sandy, thanks for joining us. No problem. Thanks for having me. So this group is able to debut uh, its season to start off the fall at a course that you're very familiar with, and that, of course, is the Carmel Cup there at Pebble Beach. What did you like about this? the way that this team was able to start out the fall? Yeah, Pebble Beach is one of my favorite places, and, you know, practicing with the team a couple of weeks before, I knew that we were going to be very strong this year, so um, no, I was really excited to get the tournament started and it was great to come away with the win. What was the most exciting part about the way that this team was able to, to come out and play together and you of course uh, shoot 14 under and, and win the individual title and help your team uh, get the team title as well? It was great, I mean we gelled so well so early on so that makes it so much easier. <laughs> And no, everybody did their part. And yeah, for me to come away with the individual title is great as well. And you have such a quick turnaround too, because you go from Pebble Beach immediately to uh, the Walker Cup there in England. Tell us about that. How fast of a turnaround was that for you? It was really fast. Yeah, I finished the last round and was probably out of there in 20, 25 minutes to go ahead and catch my flight and made the flight. And yeah, it's been a lot of travel recently but no the Walker Cup was great great experience it's a great experience but it's also a really prestigious tournament too because it's it's a big deal to even be able to be part of that and then you go and uh, have just a sensational week in there what did you like the most about the way that you were able to go out and perform like you said after that quick turnaround yeah I mean I grew up playing that style of golf um, pretty much my whole life so it was it was like playing at home again and I was comfortable playing uh, in that environment and you know the support we had was fantastic and I was playing some good golf already so that helped and yeah anytime I'm able to contribute to my team it, it's great. You mentioned the support there and you had quite a bit of people there to support you yeah. and, and they had hats made and everything too. That's Tell right, us about yeah. that. <laughs> yeah I mean they had some hats they were really bright you could pick them out pretty easily and uh, no it was just another thing to add to the support of the whole week and um, yeah, I, I was glad that all of them could make it down. And now you guys are able to take a little bit of a break uh, as a team before you go back out on the road at the end of this month. Tell us about where you're going in, in that tournament in Toledo. Yeah, we're going up to Inverness in Ohio, I think. My geography's yeah, not right. great. But <laughs> I, I, I was telling everybody it was in Florida for a couple of weeks, so they had to correct Toledo, me. Toledo, Ohio. It's, uh, yeah, it's, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's in Ohio, <laughs> Ohio. And yeah, I've heard it's a great course and we leave uh, a week tomorrow um, to get things started there. So well, Good luck to you guys then and for the rest of the season. Sandy, thanks for being here. Thanks very us. much. Thank you. Stay with us. We'll be right back on Double T Insider. Texas Tech has great tradition. chip on our shoulder. Our goal is to have a team at Texas Tech one day where we've got the teams and NBA player. Yeah. Less than 50 days until the start of Red Raider basketball, and even as I say it, I can't believe that we're that close. It seems like just yesterday we were in Minneapolis, and now we're back getting ready to go again. I guess when you play in the national championship, you play that <laughs> late. <extends> the <laughs> Red Raider football, as we mentioned, going on the road next week to face off the University of Oklahoma, 11 o'clock kick on the road to start conference play. Taylor mentioned it earlier, but volleyball will host the Red Raider Classic this weekend at the United Supermarkets Arena. Houston, Incarnate Word, and UTEP will all be in town. It all starts on Friday. That's all of our time for now. Thanks so much for being here with us today on Double T Insider. For Robert Giovanetti, I'm Taylor Peters. We'll see you next week.